just when you thought you could turn your back and walk away. The dark cloud of human indignity follows you. You have no choice but to turn and look it in the eye. It's the sex offender hit list. South Carolina Attorney General's Office said an upstate man was arrested for charges related to the sexual exploitation of a minor. James Mitchell Wayne McAbbey, a 20-year-old of Cherokee County, is accused of soliciting a person who he thought was a minor for sex and encouraging them to produce child sexual abuse material. Investigators also said McAbbey encouraged a minor to engage in prostitution and sent explicit message to a person he thought was a minor. McCabe was arrested on April 8th by the Charleston Police Department. He's being charged with five counts of criminal solicitation of a minor, three counts of sexual exploitation of a minor, two counts of disseminating obscene material to a person under the age of 18, and promoting prostitution of a minor. A Texas man has been sentenced to 30 years in prison following a guilty verdict for continuous sexual abuse of an 11-year-old child. The jury in the trial against 21-year-old Anthony Calderon returned a guilty verdict on September 5th of last year, and he's just now been sentenced by the 464th District Court of Hidalgo County on Wednesday. On September 27th of 2019, the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office was dispatched in reference to the sexual abuse of a child involving Calderon and the 11-year-old. The investigation revealed that Calderon had been sexually abusing the child on a continuous basis. And then throughout the trial, evidence and testimony showed the disturbing manner in which the continuous acts of sexual abuse occurred. Calderon received 20 years on account of indecency with the child by contact and 10 years on account of prohibited sexual conduct. See ya, Chomo. A former lame deer pastor was sentenced Wednesday to 30 years in federal prison for molesting foster children under his care. Dean Allen Smith, 67-year-old, served as the head of Morningstar Baptist Church on the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation for just over 20 years until his indictment in U.S. District Court on multiple counts of sex abuse. The foster children staying at his home came from the reservation, and the testimony of three of those kids whom he abused led to his conviction late last year. These are strong girls, Assistant U.S. Attorney Brian T. Dake said during his argument for a 360-month sentence for Smith. They're brave girls. They're girls who walked into this courtroom and told you what happened to them at the hands of Mr. Smith but they're going to live with that pain and anguish for the rest of their lives. Smith testified during his trial he became the pastor at Morningstar Baptist Church despite having no seminary training. And as pastor, he hosted prayer walks, family nights, and sobriety programs at the church. He also allowed children on the reservation to stay at his home. Some were the friends of his own children, and others came to his house when they had nowhere else to stay. Tippecanoe County, Indiana. Prosecutors are filing charges against a Lafayette man for alleged child exploitation and possession of child sexual abuse material. Investigators received over 50 tips of child sexual abuse material between July and September of last year. The suspect behind those tips was later identified as John Bradley, a 23-year-old, allegedly advertised sexually explicit images and videos of children for sale on Twitter. The Twitter post reportedly had a link to a private telegram chat where the content could be downloaded after payments were made on Cash App. The IP address traced back to a woman who Bradley lived with. Detectives reportedly found 240 videos and images of children aged 4 through 13 on Bradley's phone 
and his computer. What a sick, disgusting individual. See ya, chomo. Now down to Macon, Georgia. The uh, Houston County District Attorney's Office announced that 40-year-old Matthew Delp pleaded guilty to aggravated child molestation. Delp sexually abused a 14-year-old girl in November of 21. The uh, Georgia Bureau of Investigation was able to identify Delp's DNA during their investigation. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison with no chance of parole. And after his release, if he does get out, he will be required to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. The district attorney's office released a statement on the guilty plea. He said, uh, this is a rare case where we had DNA evidence. We normally don't have DNA in these types of cases. And I'm glad that Mr. Delp took responsibility for his disgusting actions. And I'm grateful that the child can close this chapter of her life. Mr. Delp had no criminal history and was an otherwise upstanding member of the community. This case demonstrates that the perpetrators of sexual abuse on children can be those you least expect. Fresno, California. A Selma Unified School District employee, yes another one, was arrested Wednesday on suspicion of multiple sexual abuse charges involving a child. The school district said the accusation involves inappropriate interactions with a female student. The Selma police say they arrested 26-year-old Selena Perez of Selma on Wednesday. She posted bail and bonded out the same day. Perez was booked into the Fresno County Jail on multiple felony charges including lewd and lascivious acts with a child under the age of 14, sexual battery, arranging a meeting with a minor, and annoying and harassing a child under the age of 16. The Selma Unified School District released the following statement. We've been informed on April 10th that a female campus safety assistant has been accused of having inappropriate interactions with a female student. The employee who works at our middle school has been removed from campus by our campus school resource officer who is a police officer working on school site. Huh. See ya, Chomet. Now we're going to head up to Washington for this one. After extensive deliberation, a Whitman County jury found uh, guilty a 34-year-old man accused of molesting a teenage boy from Pullman. Juan Trejo Perez was convicted of felony third-degree child molestation Wednesday afternoon. This concluded a three-day jury trial at the Whitman County Superior Court. Perez's claims were exaggerated and misleading during his testimony. Uh, he conveniently showed the victim sexual abuse material on the same day of the molestation. He fixed a lock on his door hours before the incident occurred, and he left the house afterwards and just so happened to end up at the airport trying to leave the country. Trejo Perez will appear in Whitman County Superior Court to be sentenced on May 31st. And uh, let's see, he was arrested last year at uh, the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport where he was trying to flee the country. But uh, this is the second time he's been before a jury. Trejo Perez began a trial in December of 23, and that one ended up in a hung jury with a mistrial. Not this time, Chomo. There's a strange story for you. Not so strange anymore. We're all used to policemen, right? Well, this one's just a recruit at the Ontario Police College. He's facing several charges after he allegedly posed as a Toronto police officer on social media and lured minors to bars where he'd force them to drink alcohol and sexually assault them. Authorities say that between March 10th of this year and March 31st, this uh, accused chomo was using online apps including OME TV, Snapchat, and some other social media platforms to communicate with minors. Then it's alleged the man would pose as a police officer to gain the victim's trust before meeting with them in person and taking them to local bars while knowing they were not of legal drinking age. Investigators allege that the accused would then per let's see, purchase alcoholic drinks for the victims and then sexually assault them after they were drunk. He also filmed the minor without their knowledge. 
Search warrants were executed as part of the investigation and several items, including electronic devices, were seized. Then on April 5th, the police arrested this chomo, and I'll give you his name, this is 31-year-old William Knight of Toronto. He's facing multiple charges, including false representation of a peace officer, and three counts each of sexual interference and sexual assault. Knight's also been charged with various child sexual abuse material offenses. See ya, Chomo. A former Canterbury school teacher accused of possessing child sexual abuse material was arrested on Wednesday after being caught on the run in Miami. 32-year-old Thomas Dean, a former assistant lacrosse coach and teacher, faces 28 counts of child sexual abuse material. According to the Florida Regional Fugitive Task Force, the U.S. Marshals found them using investigative methods along Northeast 83rd Street in Miami and have not provided much more information than that. You know, they don't want to give away their secrets. He was arrested in 2021 to start with and accused of sexually assaulting a teen. And Dean, of course, lost his job and after that the state dropped the charges. But according to documents, police say Dean had videos of naked toddlers and young children having sexual encounters with a man and in some cases with each other. He was also arrested for allegedly molesting a child he met using the dating app Grinder. He was accused of later meeting up with him for a sexual interaction. All of those charges were later dropped. During this investigation, detectives discovered a collection of child sexual abuse material on his devices. This included images of sexual activity involving toddlers and small children. After four months behind bars, he was given an ankle monitor and he was released with the promise that he would go to his next court hearing. But of course, he cut it off, went on the lam, and never showed up. Well, we got you now, Chomo. Now let's figure out what's going to happen to you. Hey, when I get that information, you'll be sure to find it right here first on the Sex Offender Hit List. Hopefully, see ya, Chomo. A Joliet man was jailed in Kendall County on charges of indecent solicitation of a child, grooming, and aggravated battery. This investigation that uh, led into the arrest of Christopher Fabian, a 37-year-old, began last December when the Joliet Police Department was notified of an incident involving this chomo and a 14-year-old girl. In following an extensive investigation, the detectives determined Fabian made unwelcome physical contact with the victim's body on one occasion and had sent inappropriate social media messages and photos to the victim, said Joliet Police Sergeant Dwayne English. Detectives secured a warrant for Fabian's arrest on April 3rd, and uh, Fabian, who had an address listed in the Kendall County portion of Joliet, surrendered himself at the Joliet Police Department. Fabian was then taken to the Kendall County Jail, and his next court date is set for April 22nd at the Kendall County Courthouse in Yorkville. A Longmont man was charged with possessing child sexual exploitation material on Tuesday. 44-year-old Stevie Brown was charged with 10 counts of sexual exploitation of a child, one count of habitual sex offender against children, which is a sentence enhancer, and two counts of failure to register as a sex offender. Brown was arrested on April 4th after a year of evading arrest, and he was located by the Grand Junction Police Department at a homeless shelter. A search warrant was executed on February 8th of last year at the residence in the 1700 block of Whitehall Drive, where two residents were found inside, the named owner of the IP address and Brown. Both are registered sex offenders and said they'd met during their probation. How nice, a couple sex offenders getting together to share some materials, right? Well, many electronic devices were seized as evidence, including a Dell Inspiration laptop, according to the affidavit. Forensic analysis of the laptop found more than 1,400 images and videos containing child sexual exploitation material. User accounts and pictures found on the device indicated Brown. This chomo here was the laptop's user. Brown is set for a preliminary hearing on April 29th in Boulder County Court. See ya, chomo. Let's head over to North Carolina. 
Pender County Sheriff's Office detectives arrested 35-year-old Gregory Allen Brown from Hampstead on child sex crime charges on Wednesday the 10th. He was charged with indecent liberties with a child, solicitation of a child by a computer, disseminating obscenity and 20 counts of second-degree sexual exploitation of minors. Second-degree sexual exploitation of a minor refers to the selling, sending, soliciting, and exhibiting of child sexual abuse material per state law. Detectives with the Special Victims Unit received information alleging that Brown had been contacting a child out of state and had been sending inappropriate messages. Evidence gathered so far has shown that Brown had been in contact with minors across multiple states. He was given a $500,000 secured bond. See ya, Chomo. Police arrested two Baltimore City men for possession of child sexual abuse materials, according to the Maryland State Police. The first suspect is this bald-headed Chomo here. That's Robert M. Shearer, a 41-year-old of Baltimore. Shearer is charged with five counts of possession of child sexual abuse materials. And our second Chomo is Robert W. Books, a 54-year-old of Baltimore. Books is charged with three counts of that material. Uh, both men were transported to the Baltimore City Detention Center for processing while awaiting the initial appearance. So beginning in March of this year, the Maryland State Police Computer Crimes Unit initiated an investigation into the possession of online child sexual abuse material. And on Wednesday, the Maryland State Police, with assistance from the Homeland Security Investigations and the Baltimore Police Department, served a search warrant at the identified residence of the suspects. Shearer and Books were arrested at the scene, and a preliminary forensic review of the suspect's electronic devices revealed multiple images of child sexual abuse material. See you later, chomos! A tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children caused an investigation by Cisco police and agents from Texas Department of Public Safety which has resulted in the arrest of a Cisco resident. Killian Devin Salter, 33-year-old, was taken into custody on Wednesday, April 10th, after a warrant was issued charging him with possession of child sexual abuse materials. This is an ongoing investigation and additional charges are expected to be filed as it progresses. Salter here is housed in the Eastland County Jail with a $30,000 bond, that is, man, that's insane. That means he can drop three grand to a bondsman and he's walking. The Cisco Police Lieutenant Lloyd Fagan led the investigation and Officer Samuel Munoz and the Texas DPS agents served the warrant for this chomo. I hope he don't get out. When a child experiences trauma, they can be stripped of their ability to imagine. But imagination, imagination is colours. All the colours. Imagination is freedom and whatever you want it to be. But a child without imagination is not a child at all. Will you help defend our right to imagine?